Hey everyone, welcome to the tutorial. This time we're going to go over the developer tooltip. The developer tooltip is a very useful tool, but it has a lot of complicated interactions with other objects and other items within the world. So we're going to uh, split this up a little bit. There's some videos I've already done on other areas of the developer tooltip, but we're going to just cover the tooltip today. So not inspectors, although the tooltip can generate inspectors. And not gizmos, because I have a separate video on that. So check the video description for a video on gizmos and inspectors once I've recorded it, because that's a new one I haven't done yet. So just the tooltip today. Well, let's get started. So I'm going to go into Smooth POV and I'm going to grab the developer tooltip from my tool shelf. This is the standard Neos Essentials developer tooltip. It uh, is gold with the yellow inlay. Um, you can make your own tooltips, I'll do a tutorial on that one day. Um, but we're going to go for the standard one today, as the, most, the one that uh, most users will use to start off with. You can find it in Essential Tools. With it equipped, you'll see that uh, your primary trigger doesn't do anything. Um, and that your secondary will do uh, various things depending on what you're aiming at. So here I was aiming at the ground on the world, and you'll see that the ground gets selected, and that a gizmo appears. I can also aim at this cube here, and you'll see that the uh, box around the uh, around the cube appears with the gizmos, and here on the sphere with the uh, gizmo in the center of the sphere here. So that's uh, called selecting an object. Once an object's selected, you have some choices um, within the hand menu. So within the hand menu here, you'll, the most useful one that you'll see here is deselect all. Deselect all here will clear all of those gizmos and all of those boxes from around uh, the world. That's useful for when um, you just get a little bit overwhelmed by the amount of sort of bounding boxes around and uh, want to just clear things up. It's also good at the end of sort of creating something where you want to deselect everything that's uh, been selected. Um, with something selected, you can also do destroy selected which uh, instead of having to grab something and use the destroy menu up here, you can select it with secondary and then go here and do destroy selected and it will destroy the selected object. So we can do that with the cube as well, destroy selected, uh, there's the sphere, not a cube, with the sphere and it will destroy it. So that's destroy selected for you. The next one on the list is create new. Create new is very, very complicated. There's a lot of options. So we're going to go through a few of them and just uh, talk generically about them. So you can go into create new and then you'll see 3D model and you can go to box and that'll create a box. You can do create new 3D model and torus and that'll create a torus and everything in between. So create new 3D model just creates a bunch of 3D models. It's useful for a starting space for when you want to uh, create something. You'll notice also that when you create a box that it starts with this green gizmo. Um, I'll talk about that in the gizmos video, so check the video description for any, uh, information on gizmos. Um, but that's how you get that green box up. Once the green box is there, you can also get it back by using uh, that button there, which is the second one on the gizmo, but that's in the gizmos video again. Deselect all. Uh, let me just fix my camera. The other thing that Create New can do is create colliders. Colliders are invisible copies of the um, uh, box menu, so they don't include the mesh render, they're just a collider. And again here they start with the green outline so that you can scale them. So this is a super easy way to make floors and stuff like that. You just do Create New Collider Box and then you've got the box here. And it's a collider, you can see that because my uh, laser won't go through it. So that's the Create New Collider menu. If you go to Editor, there's a few things in here. Um, I want to cover them separately. There's Asset Optimization Wizard, User Inspector, and World Light Sources Wizard. Uh, World Light Sources Wizard is better covered in a lighting tutorial. Uh, user Inspector is uh, an inspector of all the users in a world. Um, it's more sort of like an admin-y thing. There's a lot of stuff in here that you really shouldn't play with, but um, it's... Uh, it's a good thing to kind of, you know, uh, keep in mind it's there. Um, I'll use that in a, in a few videos from time to time. That's the editor thing. Inside light, you'll see that there is the option to uh, create directional lights, point lights, and spotlights. So directional will create um, a directional light, which you can play around with. Um, check a lighting tutorial for that. I'll put one in the video description again. I don't want to sort of... Um, rat hole into various topics, so I just want to go through them, like, you know, everything that the tool can do. Inside the materials list, you'll see a list of materials. This is how you create a new material. So here I can select PBS Metallic, and you'll see that it creates a new PBS Metallic material, and then I can start editing the material. This isn't a tutorial on materials. Um, that'll be another video, so again, I will move on from that one. 
Beneath materials, you see that there's object. Object has a lot of complicated stuff in it. I'll go over a few. Um, so there's fog volumes, which has a bunch of fog volumes in them. I'll go over that in a fog volume tutorial. Um, Neos UI lets you create various Neos UI items, like a button or a um, checkbox and things like that. Avatar Creator is a, uh, a different way to do the Avatar Creator. I recommend Tools Avatar Creator rather than that one as that's a bit sort of uh, long-winded to get to the Avatar Creator. Camera will do a camera setup. Um, it will create uh, this object here, which is just, you know, it's a simple camera plane. Create a new object mirror. We'll do a, a simple mirror. Hello. Um, there is no on off on that mirror, so I recommend you use one of the other mirrors inside the Neos Essentials mirrors folder. That's got a bunch of mirrors on there that have on off buttons, which are local to help with performance. Portal here creates a render portal thing here. So the blue square here is where the portal looks at. And the um, camera sphere is where the uh, result of where that's looking at is. You can't step through it or anything. It's just a, it's just a sort of rendering setup. It's not a um, walkthrough portal, if you think, like from the games with portal. You can use the portal gun to create those instead. Uh, let's go onwards. So create new spawn area and spawn point I cover in another video. I'll link them below. UIX canvas is a quick way to sort of test and take a look at UIX. I haven't done a tutorial on UIX yet because it's a very sort of complicated system and I want to give it the time that it needs to um, mature. It's still sort of in early development. There are bugs uh, being fixed in it sort of all the time and, and new features being added. So I don't really want to cover it until it's finished. Otherwise I'll have to just re-record that video later. But that will show you how to make a UIX uh, setup and various items of a UIX if you want to open that up in the inspector and take a look. Um, let's see what else we've got. Video player will create a blank video player that doesn't really do anything. I don't recommend doing this. I recommend copying and pasting in um, YouTube videos and video links from your uh, computer instead or from YouTube, etc. There'll be a video on that. Um, yeah, I've got a video on that one. I will link that in the video description as well. This is going to be a huge sort of redirectory um, uh, video. I apologize for that. I understand that this video doesn't do as well as the others for that, but uh, that's what happens sometimes with these videos. Uh, inside the next folder, you'll see text. Um, basic text will not have an outline to it, so you can see there's no outline on that text. Um, but um, text outline will have an outline on it. So you can see there, there's a. Oh, it doesn't really help. Uh, white cube, here we go. You'll see there's a black outline around the text. So that's uh, just two different text, sort of text rendering options there. I'll cover that more in a video about text. Um, not here. Empty object is very helpful. Empty object will create a, a blank empty object in the world for you that just hangs around. I recommend doing that rather than um, using the star. I see some people select the root of the world and then use the star button to go down to the next level. So that's uh, kind of difficult. Um, instead, create new empty object will do that a lot easier. And then create new particle system will um, create a particle system. This isn't a particle system tutorial, so uh, we'll move on. Apologize for all the redirection in that menu. Um, there's a lot of complicated stuff there, and we would um, we would be going for basically a long, long time, and I don't want to do that. I always want to keep these videos as short as possible. I'm just going over the bare bones, what this tool does, and how it works. Uh, the create new menu is now done. So um, actually, we need to talk about selection single because I didn't know what this meant, but now I do. Um, with selection single on, you'll notice that when I select two objects, that we only get one gizmo. So you'll see here, we only get a gizmo when I'm um, aiming at the, the, you know, the object that I most recently secondary pushed. So I'm pushing secondary here and I get a gizmo on this cube. I push secondary here, I get a gizmo on that cube. I can open up the context menu here and I can do selection multi. And now I can get multiple gizmos. They're still edited independently, but they have multiple gizmos this time. I'm not sure why you wouldn't use multi, but like when the tool spawns, it starts on single. So I just haven't got into the habit of using um, multi selection. The other thing about multi selection is uh, it will do the destroy selected on multiple objects as well, I think. No, it won't. Okay, that'd be an interesting move if it did. Thought it did. 
Eh. That is the selection mode. Um, the last part is how to open inspectors. So um, when you inspect something by selecting it, you'll see that the box appears around it. And then when I do open inspector, that will pop an inspector for that um, thing that you've selected. And then you can edit the properties here. I'll go through that in an inspector tutorial. I don't want to do, again, too much here. This is just like everything the developer tool tip does in case it's helpful. Um, if you don't have anything selected, so I've got nothing selected, I've deselected all with the deselect all menu, um, and I do open inspector, it will open inspector at the root of the world um, and let you see the whole world. So that's a useful shortcut sometimes. That's about it for the um, developer tooltip. It can do so much here, including interact with gizmos and stuff like that, but um, I don't, like I say, want to color those because I've covered gizmos before. So you can see the gizmos video for that. Um, and for many of the other things listed here. To be honest, just check the video description. There's going to be a bunch of videos linked down there for um, various other topics around the developer tool tip if you're interested. This also isn't a beginner's tutorial. Um, I will do one of those eventually, but I'm just sort of doing um, specific topics right now to get them uh, covered and documented for people that have questions. If you want beginner tutorials, there's plenty by the Neos team to get you started. If you're looking for anything specific involved with the developer tool tip, please let me know. Otherwise, I will see you next time. Bye-bye.